All right, we're in a Tesla Model 3 LFP. This is my colleague Ryan's car. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Going well, Ryan. So on this video at a spec guide, we've been getting some questions uh, from people asking in general how their electric car battery will drain. Let's say you're going on a trip, you're gonna leave this for a few days, what's gonna happen? And also the question I always get, Ryan, people always ask me with a Tesla, with any car is, uh, how long is this battery gonna last? How is it gonna degrade? How can I check that status? So Ryan, in this video, I thought it'd be super cool if we just discuss one, uh, your experience with this car when you've left it for a few days, how your battery drains, what affects that, if you're like going on a trip, flying somewhere, etc. cetera. Uh, and then let's talk about battery degradation. Like a, this is a fairly new car, right? You've only had it for a few weeks? Yeah, uh, months. a couple months, Yeah, so not too long. Not too long, So let's, but let's talk about it. Uh, there's a few geeky tips we actually have of how to look into that and tell what your battery is degrading to because batteries don't last forever. Uh, but they do last, I think, longer than most people might think. I'm excited to show you guys. Yeah, so let's get into it. All right, Ryan, so first off the bat, I wanna ask you, with your experience with this car, um, what is it like when you leave it somewhere for a day or two days, three days, four days? Absolutely, it's an excellent question and it depends. Uh, the biggest factor is sentry mode. So on Teslas, it has a setting where it uses all the cameras and it will track it the whole time. And if someone approaches your car, uh, it will start recording it and you have a recording of all, all that stuff. So it's great uh, for security, safety, all that stuff. Make sure nothing happens to your car. However, that of course uses energy. In my case, I found that it uses six to 7% per day, which is fairly significant. Uh, so if you're going on a long trip uh, to the airport, you may wanna consider turning that off if you're out, gone for a week. It is worth mentioning that sentry mode will automatically turn off when your battery gets down to 20%, so you won't be completely dead. Uh, but uh, it's worth knowing that sentry mode will use some energy. However, if you choose not to use sentry mode, there is very, very little drain. And of course, this will depend on the vehicle. Every model is a little bit different. But for the most part, a lot of EVs don't have that much drain maybe at most a percent per day, a couple percent per day. So it's very small. And if you leave it for a couple of weeks, you really shouldn't have too much of a problem. Right, so it's a very Tesla specific thing. I think it's one of their coolest features that they basically include the dash cam right in the car, have sentry mode. But like you said, that will consume uh, a lot more each day, like five, six percent. Um, so especially, I like how you mentioned 20% it cuts off. However, uh, if you're going somewhere like for us, when we fly somewhere, we have to go to Denver, uh, the airport's in the middle of nowhere, 20% might not leave you with a comfortable margin to get home uh, if you know you are leaving your car somewhere where you actually wanna drive it for quite a bit afterwards. Absolutely, glad, glad you're highlighting that. I think it's super important to keep that in mind. Sentry mode is a great tool, but if you're gone for a long time, you just wanna be careful. Make sure that you know what's happening and uh, you don't get stranded on the way back. Mm -hmm. And in most EVs, or even this Tesla, right, you turn sentry mode off, it's way lower consumption. I'll just say in my Polestar recently, I left it for uh, two weeks uh, at my girlfriend's house. And when I got back, it was way, maybe 1% lower. I don't know. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't think it drained really at all. Uh, that doesn't have sentry mode or any fancy things like that. And also the computers in these cars don't always perfectly predict battery status. That's so, right. Um, you know, I think we've all had that experience, whether it's you in this car or other cars I've noticed in some electric cars that we test, you'll get in them and the percentage might actually go up by 1% or 2% or might go down. And um, we can't always take those minute changes as fact because the computer is just guessing the battery status, right? That's right. It's really difficult for the computer to know exactly what state of charge the battery is at. There's a lot that goes into it and it's just difficult to really precisely tell. But generally speaking, the cars are pretty good at giving you a, v a very solid estimate. Yeah. One issue, though, that I've at least heard of is, you know, in a car like this with a LFP battery pack, it's a slightly different technology. And because of the way the voltage changes throughout the battery pack, it's a little bit harder for the computer to know exactly where the battery is. So Tesla, I think, has some best practices for how you actually keep your battery percentage accurate so you don't, you know, get caught with a different battery than you'd hope for. So what do you do for that, Ryan? Absolutely. So this is something specific for the Model 3 rear wheel drive uh, with the LFP battery. This will actually be true with any LFP battery, but the, the voltage doesn't drop a lot throughout the whole battery. 
basically what that means is it's difficult for the computer to tell exactly what state of charge it's at. So uh, in order to tell where it's at, you should charge it all the way up to 100%. In fact, Tesla suggests uh, that you do this about once a week, and this will help calibrate the battery and make sure uh, it, it's accurate. Um, yeah. Uh, highly recommend it. Obviously, this is much easier to do if you live at home uh, to have that routine or have that schedule. Uh, but charging 100% also could just mean leaving it at a level two charger somewhere when you can uh, doing that. Uh, the next thing I want to get into in this video, question everyone always asks, I'll put this as a chapter here now, if you're just started watching the video, your question is, right, how long does the battery in my electric car last, like long term? We're talking recharging it, uh, discharging it, like just like a phone, you know, I think everyone's had the experience with their smartphone two or three years in, it's not very usable. Totally, uh, yeah. There's a worry with electric cars that batteries can degrade similarly. Uh, what does data show us? What, what does our experience show us here, Ryan? Absolutely, it's a huge concern and it is something real. Battery degradation does happen. However, for the most part, a lot of times it starts to level out around 10, 15% degradation and it'll, it'll hold that for 150 plus thousand miles for a lot of vehicles. Uh, of course, electric cars are new and there's a lot of stuff that we need to learn and hasn't been uh, discovered yet. But for the most part, and especially with Teslas, which have been on the road for a long time, we're seeing hundreds of thousands of miles on a battery. And, you know, there is, of course, degradation, but it's not like you're losing half of your battery or something like that. It's closer to 10 or 15 percent usually. Yeah, and that 10 to 15 percent, as I understand it, that could take like a decade to get to with most people's normal driving. Um, I guess it would depend also on temperature. So if you live in a really hot climate and you leave your car outside a lot, I think it's probably going to degrade faster. Yes, so high temperatures. So if you're fast charging a lot, if you're in a lot of heat, a lot of that stuff, that will uh, accelerate the degradation. Yeah, so basically high temperatures, more stuff's going on in the battery chemistry, anything that causes that ambiently high temperatures, you live in Arizona or sunny Colorado, like we do uh, in the summer, it does get really hot here, sure does. as we're experiencing now, uh, or you ch fast charge, that heats up the battery. Basically any of these actions that are heating up the battery past its kind of uh, ambient state. Also deep cold, I think that's less common typically for people, Yeah. but if you do store your car in really cold climates outside of a heated garage, especially when it's you know uh, a, a low battery level, it can actually heat up the battery enough to make sure that everything is okay. So that could permanently also affect your battery degrading quicker. Right, absolutely. And one thing I do wanna mention is yes, degradation can happen and all those things that you mentioned will accelerate it, but all these cars were designed with that in mind. The engineers know that it gets hot. They know people are going to fast charge and they engineer it to take it. So there will be some degradation, but it's not gonna be crazy and you shouldn't feel too bad or be too worried about, you know, if it's 90 degrees outside, oh, I gotta turn air conditioning on in the garage or something. They're pretty solid. You don't have to worry too much, but uh, it is worth knowing that high temperatures do cause battery degradation. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that. You should just use the car. This also applies to charge limits. We made a video about that on this channel, but Ryan, best practice for a lot of EVs is to charge them typically to 80%. With this Model 3, Tesla says 100% because that helps calibrate the car's battery management system. But nonetheless, you're not always charging this to 100%. I think realistically, especially the fast charger, most people aren't gonna wanna wait around and charge 100% all the time. There's no reason to. If you need to every now and then, I like what you mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Don't stress about it. Don't worry, oh no, it's killing my battery. Just don't do that all the time. Uh, these batteries are so huge, unlike a phone, we don't have to worry about topping them up all the time. It's okay to live in a lower battery range because um, what, in this Model 3, like 50% battery is still gonna get you well over 120 miles, right? That's right, yeah. So even with 10, 15% degradation, you're getting a huge amount of range and that's gonna take years and several tens of thousands of miles before you start seeing that. Absolutely. But Ryan, let's get into one more kind of neat trick specifically to Tesla's. Um, there's a way, as I understand it, you can kind of look at a lot of stats in this car, including doing a battery test for yourself. If you suspect your older Tesla, or maybe you bought one used with a lot of miles on it, might have some degradation. How would you go about looking into that, Ryan? Absolutely. So we're going to go into something called service mode. And this is for Huge nerds, it's just a ton of information, a ton of data. So we're gonna go into the settings on the screen. Uh, software, press and hold on the model. 
and then you type in service. Okay, and then it says service mode, and we can enable it. I'm going to make sure the AC turns on. It turns off automatically. And then there's this new screen, and it has so much information. One of my favorite ones is uh, with the charging screen, especially when you're plugged in, it gives you all this information, battery temperature, just all this nerdy stuff. It's really cool. Okay, so there's all these tabs here. Um, these options, we're gonna to wanna to press the lightning bolt, which is also known as the high voltage menu. That's for the high voltage battery that actually drives the car, not the low voltage starter battery, because electric cars still do have those. Uh, we're gonna go into high voltage system, and that dumps us into this screen, and then there's an option to do what's called the battery test. That's right, we've got the health test right here, and uh, it's a, a pretty extensive one, and it'll take a while, but uh, it'll make sure that you know what you're doing uh, so what happens is when your car is plugged in, it will drain the battery to zero and then charge it all the way back up. And then it will give you uh, an estimate for what your battery degradation is, what percent health it's at. Uh, and it's a great way to just get an idea of where it's at. And it's not 100% perfect, but it will give you a really good idea of how things are going and where your car's battery is at. Yep, so this is gonna be a situation where if you don't have a home charger, you're gonna wanna be in a friend's driveway if they're okay with that for like a day. It's gonna take a while, I guess. Um, you're gonna plug in the car, and like you said, it'll run down, charge itself back up, and then to even start this process, you can see we're not gonna do it right now because we're not plugged in and we don't have a spare 24 hours, but uh, you're going to uh, put the vehicle in park, of course, it's stop right now, we're in service mode. You have the key with the vehicle, hold that right turn signal, uh, and then press down the brake for eight seconds, do all these things. That incantation will basically start the battery test. Yes, and uh, I, sh I think you should plan out at least uh, 24 hours where you can't use the car if you're doing that. Yeah, and so this is not something you should do compulsively or all the time, because uh, like we've mentioned, this can be huge inconvenience, but I think it's cool to let you do this as a user. If you live far from the Tesla service center or you uh, have the opportunity to do this with a car and you're curious about its battery health, this health test is a really cool diagnostic you can do for yourself. Absolutely. It's one of the many things that's really great in the service mode for Teslas. It gives you a ton of great nerdy information. And if you're into that, Tesla has it for you. Absolutely. It's so cool to give you a lot of control. We've got this red outline around this uh, display too to let us know we're in service mode. Ryan, when we're done here, how do we get out of service mode? Of course. So uh, we're just going to close that. And right here, we've got the exit. You press and hold, and that's it. Good, our car's back to normal uh, and everything's good with that. So that's basically a few video, a few concepts here that hopefully are helpful for everyone. Understanding battery health um, and then a few, I think, specific quirks that Tesla, they let you do uh, for this. Now, Ryan, before we end, I want to mention that battery health test we showed, that's an automated procedure in this Tesla. Anyone could do it in any electric car, though, um, with a broad method of just as I understand it, running it down, right? Yeah, uh, just running it all the way down to zero. Most cars will have, uh, somewhere in the car, it measures how much energy used since on this trip. So if you reset the trip when you start, that will give you the most accurate measure of how much battery you've used. And that's what we do on our range test on auto spec reviews. Absolutely, when we do those range tests, we of course uh, follow set speed. We do kind of a loop style. So there's a lot of variables into testing range that uh, play into that to make sure you're getting consistent results. If you're comparing, let's say like my battery, when I drove it down, when it was new versus five years later. I mean, you're gonna have to replicate things as much as possible. It's always hard to do that. General rule of thumb though we've learned, right? The battery will degrade long-term 10 to 15%. It takes a while to even get there though. The first few years of owning the car, it's probably gonna be well under 10%. Um, it just, I think as I understand it, degrades quickly then kind of falls off. Yeah, uh, it degrades quickly a bit initially and it starts to level off and yeah, it's, it's a reality of electric cars, but it's not something that I think you need to have too much concern about. Just keep it in mind and do what you can to try to minimize it. Yep, the life of the battery, really most batteries that are not, I think, extraordinarily abused will basically be the lifetime of a lot of these vehicles with when you're factoring suspension, chassis, everything else, everything in the car can of course wear down. So well over a decade, I think is reasonable to expect with just about every car that's not a first generation Nissan Leaf. And as we've established earlier, don't worry about leaving your car parked for a few days. As long as it's like above 30%, you're really fine. Absolutely. And keep in mind for century mode on Teslas, 
uh, it uses a good bit of battery. Yeah, so if you are, it is a while, and even if your car is at 50%, 60%, it's gonna be weeks. Yeah, turn sentry mode off, uh, make sure a car is somewhere safe, uh, or uh, some uh, airport parking things, I think you can plug your car in. If your car's plugged in, then of course you could leave sentry mode running and do all that. But anyhow, hope that's been helpful. Um, plenty of more kind of advice to come on this channel about electric vehicles, battery maintenance, all of that. Hopefully this has been helpful though. Um, thanks for joining me, Ryan. Yeah, of course. Looking forward to the next one.